Hello YouTube and welcome to another edition of the Gravestone Pros here at North Country Memorials. We are so glad that you're here today. We're going to have a great time. I want to talk to you guys today a little bit about etchings, the different kinds, why we do the etchings we do. Uh, I know I've showed videos of dad etching and showing you kind of what we do, how we do, but I haven't really talked about it much. And I got an email today from a customer, not from my area, but from Wisconsin. So shout out to you, James. Uh, this video should help clear up some of the questions you had for you and for others. So thank you for sending that email. It's going to be a great day. Come along. <music> etching on a headstone there are three basic styles that you will see commonly this day and age. You will see laser, you will see hand, and you will see impact. And the first one I'm going to talk about is going to be hand etching because that is what we do most commonly here. This is a hand etching done by my father and you can get a, a high level of detail on something like this, but it is limited to what your artist can do. So if you have a good artist, you can get very nice stuff. If you have a poor artist, it's not gonna be quite as good. But many, uh, many quality etchings um, are done by hand and there's a lot of great artists that do them. So it's not uh, terribly uncommon to see really great hand art. I wanna show you just another piece that he had done that I thought was kind of cool. And yeah, so that's done by hand. He uses a vibrating Dremel and either a diamond tipped or a carbide tip. And he is physically scratching off each line of the polish to get that result. Now, we do not paint or enhance our etchings in any way. It's just the natural stone and that's what you're getting. The next I wanna talk about is impact. And we have only done one of these so far. And here it is. I might've shown some of this. Now you can see a lot more level of detail on something like this. And again, depending on what you're doing, the file that you have, these can be better or worse. Um, but these turn out really nice. And they are, again, they're etched into the stone very, very deep, and there's a good amount of longevity to that. And that is basically being done with a similar technique to what an artist would do by hand, but it's doing it with a computer, and it's doing it line by line. It does one line, and it kind of goes through, it vibrates, it etches in, and you can change parameters on that, go deeper, go more shallow. Uh, you can get more detail, less detail, depending on how you do that. Um, but again, that process is uh, you know it's deeper into the stone now laser is not created equal um, two different things with laser one thing I don't like almost every company I've seen that sends me stuff laser they laser it and then they paint it um, when the paint comes out it diminishes how nice it looked on day one so that's never a good thing in my opinion but you see that does happen. I don't have a good example to show you right here on a, on a thing, but I'll put up some photos of some different laser etchings. People like laser because you can get printer-like quality and replication to a photo. So if you're doing a portrait, people like laser, but you can do the same thing now with the impact. The impact etching is kind of a newer way to do, uh, kind of taking the old technique, marrying it with new technology um, and something a little newer in the industry. You don't see it as often, um, but it's becoming more popular as it becomes more affordable. More and more shops are getting that. And so today I will actually show you uh, as I visit one of my buddies in Canada, you will get to see his setup. He was actually working on his first one. Going back to talking about laser versus impact, when the laser is done, you can have lasers that are gonna impact the stone more or less. And rather than uh, physically uh, having a tool that touches the stone and moves it, it is a laser and it is burning the polish away. And so that is why you get a very precise drawing and it is very consistent um, because that laser is very fine in its detail. It does a fantastic job recreating something. 
as does the impact versus an artist you know you're working with somebody and it's going to always be kind of the artist's rendition of that portrait that being said i have seen beautiful portraits done by artists very very closely uh, represents the photo that they started with and it is a great way to do it and comes out with a fantastic product so laser has become popular because that kind of hit the market uh, before the impact etching but I think the impact etching is going to be uh, kind of taking over from the laser guys as we see it more and more come into the market so those are kind of some of the different styles if you want to see other videos of dad doing etching and that kind of stuff I have several done um, I have them on a playlist that you can look showing our different etchings hopefully this kind of answers some of those questions about the different styles of etching the other thing that I really should color is what color granite we etch on uh, you'll notice both the examples that I showed you were on black granite headstones that is the way to go talked a little bit a few weeks ago about a laser etching that we did on a American black granite which has kind of streaky white going through it all right, we made it here, and this is the stone. So <laughs> the first day I drove up the hill and stopped there, and from the car, I could not see the etching on this, and so it was, like, very, very tough. But then uh, as I walked up, you could see from these photos here that, uh, you know, there was still an etching there, and it just was very very difficult to see and the, the deer kind of blended in with the rest of the background and nothing really stood out anymore so we felt the best thing to do was just to get a new stone for them and replace it so that it looked good and it looked nice and uh, really pretty happy with how this turned out we went from uh, we went from basically an American black stone to the imported jet black and the result is an etching that is going to look really good for years and years and years. And, uh, yeah, really happy with how it turned out. So, anyways, this cemetery, kind of one of my uh, favorite cemeteries. A pretty spot. You could see as you come up, as we came in, a big hill there. And we have a lot of stones in here. I've filmed in here before. This is one of mine. This is one of mine. This one here is one of mine. It's just all over the place here. Mine, 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 mine. Tons and tons of them, so. Stay away from granites other than pretty much jet black. That's gonna be the only thing that you want to etch on. You can do on others. I have etched successfully on India Red and on Cat's Eye. India Red, not as happy with, but the Cat's Eye um, is really actually quite good. I try hard to keep to the jet black when we're etching stuff. Hope that's helpful. We are going to head up to Canada to visit my buddy in Ontario and get a little look into his shop. I stopped by just briefly on a little quick family trip last weekend, and so I wanted to show you guys his shop and let you meet my buddy Gord. All right, guys, I am here with my buddy Gord up in Canada. Told you I was coming up here. We're going to try to anyways. This is uh, kind of the front of his building here you can see. Big steel building you just put in. A little bit of display out front here. And then we'll come in and take a look inside. So when you walk in his front door here, he's got a nice little display here. I really like this piece. Um, I know they call this antiquing and kind of a newer thing. I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen it shown. I had not seen it until uh, I think 20, uh, 2020 was the first I saw that technique, but it looks really cool. Um, I always wonder when I see that kind of stuff what the longevity will be for the uh, finish and stuff, but it just has such a unique look to it. But I love the kind of that cut edge on there. Really cool. So then he's got just a few pieces in here. I'll give you just a little shot of his shop here. There he is. So he's working over here. I'll come and take you, show you this. So this is an impact etcher. So it's done with the computer, but it is not laser. So it's a little deeper. It's going to have the longevity, just like a hand etching would. Um, in my opinion, far superior to laser etched, but I know there's people that like the laser etched because they can get a little bit more fine, I guess, than this can. But uh, this is kind of a new setup for him. He said this is his first one he's running here. Yeah, 
So, <laughs> yeah, a big old, big old die for the first one here. How long have you actually been doing monuments now? Uh, about a year and a half. Probably. Year and a half. And before that, you were doing what? How'd you get into doing this crazy well, business? I worked in the cemetery. Cemetery guy. So Gord's been a Gord's been a cemetery guy. He told me for many many years here, and uh, got into starting to do some monuments and stuff. So he built this booth out. This is his setup for manual curtain, and he's got his air coming in, kind of like mine, sitting up on top there. Um, but he also has a dryer. So after it goes through his tank it hits the air dryer, which is definitely uh, definitely a little nicer than my setup for sure. So here is his setting cart. It's got its own motor and stuff, so it doesn't have to be hooked to anything. It can be totally self-propelled and he can take it where he needs it and wants it. And then, can you get more than one die on there? Yeah, I usually put two dies and two bases on it. Two dies and two bases on it. I put the bases on, on up there where the little impact gun is. Okay. And I put two dies on here. Yep. And of course, then I can put more on the trailer too. Right. And this, you take, um, this basically goes up onto a trailer and then you take it off the trailer in the cemetery, mm -hmm. right? It's not, right. And you those, drive it right, to the right. Plot. drive it right to the plot. Yeah. That's okay. nice. So there's a power extension, the front drives out to the, almost about four feet of it. Okay. So that comes out four feet from there. These in those okay oh yeah you gotta they drive them up and down yep i couldn't see cranking things yep that's super handy yeah i've said we need to do that on uh on our smaller truck mm -hmm. the uh that has a similar thing and yeah you have to sit there and spin and do yeah. it that way and it'd be nice to made, uh, nice to not have to Tesla, just not very far from here Okay. Yeah, there's a company there that makes it. Uh, so it's kind of a local. Say again, what th what town is that? Keswick. Keswick. Brower okay. Our Kesmat uh, makes it. They okay. Come all over the state. So. Yep. Yep. Um, it really is a nice looking design, and it's something again. Um, I think at some point we will end up having something like this because uh, it's nice. The truck works well. We got good reach and stuff on the truck, but there are days when you're just not going to get to the area you need to be lifting. Um, with a truck and so to have a mobile system like this I think would be very very nice and that's a thing and dad does a lot of setting on his own um, if it's close enough to the road that he can get it in with the truck and then he could do it but if it's yeah if it's farther away we have to have two guys that's my Canadian buddy Gord I uh, this is the second time I got to stop in and see him here and uh, Thanks, Gord, for, for letting You're me welcome. film a little bit. I'm, I know that other guys on the channel are, are going to appreciate getting to see um, a little bit of somebody else's shop other than mine. I think yeah. people, I'm surprised I have subscribers that are still with me sometimes. It's the same <laughs> shop every day over and over. So ah, it's kind of fun to see something else. Everybody so. does things a little differently. Exactly, yeah. exactly, which yeah, that's, so. that's the fun part. Well, I am back to the office after a great weekend with the family up in the cottage in Canada. We had a great time. It was so nice being with Gord at Divine Memorials. If you're in Ontario in the in the GTA and you need something done, um, he is probably your go-to guy. If he can't help you, he'll probably be able to point you in the right direction. He's been a cemetery in those parts for many, many years, so he's got the connects for sure. So give him a shout if you need him. Divine Memorials. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it was entertaining and educational. That is always my goal. So I hope that I hit that. If you have not subscribed to this channel, we are almost at 800. Last I looked, we were at 790 subscribers. So I want to break that 800. If we could do it that this week, that would be fantastic as we head towards that thousand subscriber goal. Thank you guys. We'll see you all next time. Thank you.